Welcome to the Depth Dive. We're uh, doing things a bit differently today. Oh, how so? Well, instead of our usual reports or articles, we're going to use a set of practice questions, specifically for the Databricks Certified Data Engineer Associate Exam. That'll be our map, sort of. Ah, okay. Interesting angle. So our source material is basically excerpts from these practice questions. Exactly. Comes with the answers and importantly, the explanations behind them. Got it. So the mission is to pull out the uh, the key knowledge nuggets, what Databricks thinks is essential for data engineers based on what they test. Precisely. It's like getting a sneak peek at the foundational stuff. Makes sense. And, you know, just for context, the source did mention some basic exam facts. Right. Like uh, it's web-based online proctored. Yep. One hour, 30 minutes, 45 questions. Mm -hmm. Passing score is 70%. And the cost, $200 USD. Good background, but yeah, let's get into the actual tech concepts. Okay, let's do it. So let's maybe unpack this by looking at the problems these features solve. You know, in the real world, these exam questions seem to point right at them. Good idea. Where should we start? Well, first up, a huge challenge, right? Getting data into the platform, especially when it's constantly arriving, efficiently, huh. I mean. Oh yeah, ingestion, yeah. classic problem. And the source, um, it, it looks like one question tackles this head on. Comparing autoloader to like the old ways. And the big takeaway from the explanation seems to be autoloader's ability to automatically spot and uh, incrementally ingest new files really fast, minimal latency. Right, and why that's such a big deal is key. The source notes that autoloader just watches your cloud storage. It automatically scoops up new files when they land. No manual scripting or complex schedules needed then. Exactly, that's the point. Those traditional ways are often slow, error prone, you know, you got to manually track things. So the exam is really driving home that autoloader automates and speeds up getting data into Delta Lake. Frees up engineers, enables near real-time stuff without babysitting. Totally. It's about efficiency. But like, how does it actually know a new file arrived? Is it just constantly scanning? That sounds inefficient too. Ah, good question. The source emphasizes the automation. Maybe not the exact mechanics, but uh, for engineers, it's useful to know it can be really smart about it. It can use cloud notification services like SQS or PubSub. They basically ping autoloader instantly when a file lands. Oh, okay. So it gets told. Yeah. Or it can do efficient directory listing too. Mm. Either way, the automation is the critical part. The exam highlights fast and easy loading. Okay. So data's in. What's next? What's another big headache for data engineers, especially in like bigger companies? Hmm. Probably managing access, security making sure the right people see the right data, compliance. Exactly. Which brings us, I think, to Unity Catalog. The source has a question about its main function. Right, you see. It's core to the Databricks Lakehouse platform, and the answer the source points to. It says Unity Catalog provides unified access control and data governance across all workspaces. The all seems important. Definitely. It's about centralization. Instead of managing permissions everywhere, like per table, per cluster, per workspace. Which sounds like a nightmare. It can be. Unity Catalog brings it all under one roof. The source explanation highlights that, centralizing control over data access. So consistent security policies, easier permission management, simpler audits, all in one spot. Yep. If you've dealt with fragmented governance before, this unified approach is a huge win, cuts down complexity massively. So the exam sees the central control as like the defining thing for Unity Catalog, managing access and security in one place. That seems to be the key takeaway, centralized governance. All right, let's switch gears to something super practical, costs, cloud costs. Everyone worries about that, right? Oh, absolutely. Running clusters isn't free, especially powerful ones. You can't just leave them running. And the source includes a question specifically on this. How does an engineer make sure a cluster shuts down automatically after a job to, you know, save money? A very common requirement. And the answer, the exam expects. Config your auto termination right there in the jobs cluster settings. Simple enough. And the why is pretty obvious, as the source explains. Enable auto termination and the cluster turns itself off when the job's done. No more paying for idle compute time. Exactly. It prevents that wasted spend. So for production jobs especially, where you only need the resources while it's running, auto termination is just essential. It's basic cost hygiene almost. Definitely. I remember... Uh, before good auto termination was common, accidentally leaving a big cluster running overnight. Oof, budget nightmare. Totally. So yeah, the source highlights it. Auto termination stops clusters automatically, saves money, key operational setting. Makes sense is on the exam. 
Okay, now let's focus a bit more on the data layer itself, Delta Lake. The source has a question about something it can do that uh, traditional data lakes typically can't. Ah, yeah, this gets into a core technical advantage. The question asks about an operation Delta Lake supports, but, you know, your average data lake doesn't. And the answer the source gives is ACD compliant concurrent rights huh? to a table. Right. ACD rights. And this is where it gets really interesting because it solves a huge problem. What problem exactly? Well, the explanation points out Delta Lake supports ACD transactions. You know, atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Okay. Because of that, multiple users or multiple jobs can write to the same Delta table at the same time without messing things up. No data corruption, no conflicts. Whoa, okay. So no more complicated locking schemes or having to process updates one by one just to avoid collisions. Pretty much. It, traditional data lakes often just files sitting in storage. They don't usually have that transaction guarantee built in. If two things try to write at once, you can get garbage data. Right, I can see how that would happen. Delta Lake uses a transaction log to manage this. It ensures everything happens reliably even with many writers. So the key takeaway, the thing the exam stresses, is Delta Lake allows safe, simultaneous writes. Yeah. Big improvement for reliability and just letting multiple processes work together. That does sound like a fundamental difference. Okay, one more area. Let's talk operations. Once your job is actually running in production, mm -hmm. how do you keep an eye on it? Monitoring, yeah. Yeah. Critical stuff. Where do you go to check performance, see logs, debug if things go wrong? The source has a question pointing you right to the answer in the UI. And that answer is? The jobs UI, specifically under the job run history. Makes sense. And the explanation, I assume, says that's where you find the details. Yep. Detailed logs, performance metrics, everything for each run of your job. So it's the central spot for checking up on things. Engineers need that jobs UI to see if jobs passed or failed, how long they took, Check the logs. Standard output, standard error, all that. Yeah. And even links to the Spark UI for deeper dives into performance if you need it. So the exam basically says, need to monitor your jobs, go to the jobs UI run history. That's your window. Well, thanks for joining us for this deep dive into these key Databricks data engineering concepts uh, seen through the lens of the certification exam questions. Yeah, this was fun. Good way to cover the basics.